Hi, um, in today's video we're going to be solving quite a specific problem. So this is just a tutorial for those of you that have an Intel based NAS that has um, onboard HDMI, so therefore it has a graphics card built in, but you're wanting to use an additional graphics card that you've added, perhaps through the PCIe slot. Um, so if you want to use that graphics card with Plex specifically, um, we have to go through the procedures that I'm going to show you in this video. Um, we get a lot of people requesting this and we do have an accompanying PDF um, that we will put a link to in the in the bottom of the video description here. Um, this is what I'm going to follow, so it's on screen here. These are the, the steps I'm going to, to be following. I won't keep it on screen for all of it. I'll actually do the steps so you can see it uh, step by step. Now, if you set your NAS up a while ago, um, a couple of the steps can probably be um, forgotten about straight away. So if you do have um, your, your NAS set up from before we forced you to create a new username for the admin account, um, then you can just use the admin account. Um, I'm set up here with the admin account. So what you'll have to do, first of all, is come into the uh, users section of your control panel and you've got to re-enable the admin account. You can do that in the edit account profile and this disable this account box will be a tick so you've got to use your other account to disable it and you can then log into the other account. Uh, the default um, username and password for that other account is always the MAC address so if I pull that in here on QFinder um, the MAC address is what's written there so it is case sensitive and you don't have to use the dashes so that will be the default admin password of your NAS if you're one of the uh, the people that have set up your NAS um, after we disable the admin account automatically. So you must use the admin account for these uh, next steps that I'll go through. Um, so I've already done that. Um, something else you also have to do is enable SSH. So this is off by default. So you do have to come into the control panel and enable SSH to be able to, to do this. Um, so the symptom we're trying to fix here is if you're using um, the extra GPU with hardware accelerated transcoding enabled in Plex, um, you often see in the resource monitor, so if I come down here to the resource monitor, go to system resource and graphics card, um, even while you're trying to do hardware transcoding, you might see that the usage is just 0% and 0%. Um, so it doesn't look like the graphics card is being used for anything. Um, and it's not. So when Plex first starts up, it auto detects your graphics card and it will use the first graphics card that it finds um, in the driver list. And that's always going to be the onboard graphics card. Um, so we're going to try and get around that by telling Plex to, to forcibly use another graphics card. Uh, there is no drop down in the user interface, unfortunately, so we do have to do it at the command line to make that work. So the very first step is going to be to SSH your NAS as the admin user. So I'll drag in an enlarged uh, terminal window here on my Mac. If you're on Windows, you might want to use something else like Putty as a different option for doing SSH. Um, but for, for me here, I'm going to use um, just the terminal window here. Um, so one of the things you're going to need is the IP address uh, for your NAS. So I can see it there in the address bar. So what we're going to do first of all is go SSH space. And I'm going to type admin because that's who I want to log in. So admin at, and then I'm going to do the IP address of where I want to log in. So that's the IP address of my NAS that I can see up there. Uh, the first time you first SSH, it might ask you a question. You just have to type the word yes to, to allow the login. So now you type in the password for your admin account and you'll be greeted with this menu. Um, here it's just a queue for quick because we want to go to the shell environment, push enter. And are you sure you want to exit? Yes, enter. So that's going to bring us to a command prompt. We're now typing commands directly um, into the NAS. Um, so this is QUTS hero that I'm using here. So I'm just going to go CD space forward slash to bring me to the uh, the root. So I'm at the root of the NAS if you like. So I'm going to now run a find command to find out exactly where the Q package, uh, the installation of Plex is on the NAS. So I'm going to do find dash name and then I'm going to type Plex media server with the P, M and S um, all in uppercase. <clears throat> and it's going to come back with a location. So there's the location that we need to go to. Um, so you can copy that or you can type it if you want. So it's uh, CD in my case. Uh, so I'm going to do forward slash share forward slash ZFS 530 data uh, forward slash dot Q P PKG for Q package forward slash Plex media server. So now I'm in that folder. Um, so now we need to go into the uh, library and Plex media folder. So we can see that there is a, a library folder on screen there. So that's the one we need to go to next. So CD 
um, library. It's all case sensitive here. And then there should be in here a Plex Media Server folder, which there is, which we can see there. So we're gonna go into that folder next. So CD Plex Media Server. Now, if I check what's in this folder here, I can see that there's a preferences.xml, and this is the file that we need to edit to tell Plex um, that we want it to use the other GPU um, that's installed in this NAS. Um, so first of all, we need to find out which GPU is which in the NAS. So generally, when we go to find that, we're going to get a list of drivers um, for, the, for the NAS, and we're looking for the one that has render in it. Uh, generally, the lower number one, if you've got two GPUs, the lower number one will be your onboard. The higher number will be the PCIe one. Um, so here to find out what that is, we do ls space dash la forward slash dev forward slash dri. So device driver, basically. <coughs> And we can see here that we've got um, the two render options here. So we've got render D128 and render D129. Um, so in my case, render D129 will be the PCIe one, the NVIDIA one that I've got installed. Um, and because there is two, Plex will generally just go to the first one it finds. So that's why it won't show anything in the resource monitor when you're trying to do hardware transcoding. It will look like it's hardware transcoding in Plex, but it's using the onboard one. Um, but you've told the QNAP that you want to use the other one. So the QNAP's only showing um, the NVIDIA one in the uh, device driver list there for the system resource. Um, so now what we need to do is edit that preferences.xml. So on the NAS here we do VI, which is the editor, and we're going to type in preferences.xml. I'm going to push enter, and that's going to open up um, uh, the file. Uh, to, to edit. So what we need to do is we need to add something at the very end of the file. So we can see at the very end of the file here there is a forward slash um, with the um, um, sort of, I don't know the actual term of this, but it's the uh, sort of open bracket sort of thing there, the closed bracket. Um, we need to put something right before that. Um, so if I was to uh, push the dollar symbol, what that's going to do now is going to take me to the uh, end of the file. So now I can browse through the file down to this point i need to push i so that i can edit it so now i'm in insert mode we can see at the bottom of the screen it changed to insert and so i'm going to put something in front of the slash and the arrow symbol there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to type in a uh, basically a, a piece of text that's going to force plex to look at the correct gpu so for this, what we're going to do is make sure there's a space after the uh, the metrics epoch um, equals one there. So we're going to do here instead hardware device path. It's all important to get the case uh, right as well. I'm going to do equals, and then we're going to type in uh, the path of that driver that we found earlier. So that was going to be forward slash dev, forward slash dri, forward slash render, D129. So that's the extra one that we need to add in. So we're going to close the quotes there on that. So that's basically what we need to, uh, to add into that. So we need to bring that slash back towards the end of that. And that's all you need to do to edit the file. So now we have to hit escape to come out of the edit mode. Once we've done that, we do colon X. And what that's going to do is it's going to save the file. So you can see that it says preferences XML written. Um, so that's now saved the file. So sometimes you, for it to work properly, you might have to stop and start Plex. You know, you can either do that through uh, the app center itself, or you can type forward slash etc forward slash init.d um, forward slash plex.sh and stop. And that's going to stop Plex Media Server on the NAS. So it'll take a couple of seconds. Uh, once it's stopped, uh, you can open that back up. So just push up to re. Uh, type it but change stop to start instead at the end and that's going to start plex media server backup so sometimes it might need you to um, stop and start plex uh, to make it work again you can go to the app center and do that and just uh, click the drop down next to the app in the app center stop it and then when it stops you can hit start that way as well and um, so by doing that now if you were to go into plex um, and do some hardware transcoding and go into your resource monitor and go across to the GPU, you would see that it's now got some usage uh, happening on it. 
Um, I don't have anything, so mine's still saying zero, but that's now telling Plex uh, to use uh, the GPU that you want it to use, not to just use the one it's auto-detected. Um, again, everything that we've we've typed there is going to be um, down below under the video, so you'll be able to copy and paste um, everything as needed instead of typing it out manually like I did there. So if you need to, you can uh, refer to that PDF file. Uh, the process is pretty much exactly the same with QTS. It's just the path for where uh, the Q package is uh, will look slightly different. So if I pull the PDF in here, um, here it was, uh, on my case, it was uh, forward slash share, forward slash ZFS530 underscore data. Uh, ZFS is very specific to the QUTS hero setup that I'm using here. Uh, so on a QTS operating system, it would look different. It might say something like forward slash share, forward slash cache dev one data. Uh, then the .q package part would be r rather similar after that. Uh, but every other step would be identical between the two. Uh, so hopefully you found that useful and again this is only really for anybody that's got um, an Intel based QNAP um, that has an onboard GPU so you can tell that if it's got HDMI ports on the back of the NAS um, so an example of a NAS um, that would need this fix if you were adding a GPU would be the one I'm using here which is the TVS-H1288X um, if you had something else like the TS-H886 instead, which is an Intel-based NAS, uh, but it does not have onboard GPU, so you, you, do, you don't need to do this because the first GPU you add uh, will be the only one in the list, so Plex will use it just fine. Um, so again, this is just for the, uh, the Intel-based units that have uh, an onboard graphics card or GPU uh, with the uh, built-in HDMI ports and you've added something else to do it. If you just want to use the onboard GPU for your Plex hardware transcoding, you don't need to do this part. Plex will auto-detect and work great. Uh, this is only if you've added the GPU separately. Um, if anybody has any questions, please do let me know in the comments section down below. And once you've done this as well, I would recommend going back into the uh, uh, control panel and disabling the admin user after you've done this step. Um, it's only needed for the admin. If you tried to do um, all the SSH steps um, uh, through the, the other account that's got admin privileges, it won't work um, uh, in the same way. You'll get lots of errors and permissions aren't allowed and you can't save files once edited. Um, so it's important to make sure that you do it as the admin user. But once you've finished, go and disable that admin user uh, so that it's, uh, it's no longer active on the NAS. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Again, any questions, uh, do, do ask us in the comments section down below. Thanks a lot.